Peggy 16. Howdy, everyone. I am Paul Sage. I'm Nick Conkle. I'm Maria Alaprando. And I'm Rich Lambert. So today we're going to be showing you one of our veteran dungeons, and that is the Crypt of Hearts. This will be coming out around the end of June. The thing about veteran dungeons, in particular, this very most recent one, is that they are hard. I think that's what we'll be showing a lot of here. <laughs> the good news is that we have the benefit of editing to make us look like we never die, although we do die quite a bit. The, the bad news is that we're still going to be having to deal, deal with this incredibly challenging encounter, and, and when you guys deal with it too, you'll really see how, how hard it can be. One of the things I'm trying to focus on as DPS is I'm going around and making sure I interrupt all the monsters. I have an ability called Deep Breath, which allows me to do a AoE interrupt. Also, I use a standard of might to stop taking a whole lot of damage. Speaking of dying, that's actually probably my responsibility. <laughs> so I chose Sorcerer Tank for this, and I particularly like Sorcerer Tanks because not only do I have my uh, sword and board, but my Sorcerer abilities augment that by uh, allowing me to go into lightning form, which gives me extra shielding. Of course, Puncture or Ransack with my uh, sword and board abilities really keep the taunt alive on the monster so the monster will follow me while everybody else does all the work. This, uh, this boss is particularly challenging. I mean, a lot of, in a lot of ways, it was the one that is, uh, uh, has maybe the most learning curve just because there's so many mechanics. Uh, you need to tank the boss and face her away from the group because she's going to shoot out this storm of lightning. Uh, she also picks a random person to drop an entire uh, area that chases them, and they have to run a, run a lap. Uh, you can see it happening right there to, to make sure that they don't get hit by it. Uh, she'll web a team member, and then someone has to come free them. Yeah, in these dungeons, the, the monsters tend to hit so hard, um, you know, even with their base attacks and, and just dealing with that, that if you're not properly interrupting and, and blocking their, their really powerful ones, uh, you'll go down very fast. It's really important that every member of the group play really well. Healers take note. Uh, you are going to be in for a lot of work. For this particular run, I was playing a Nightblade healer, basically using the Restoration Staff. I have my shield in there to help out when times get really close, and the rest of the time I'm running around trying to keep people alive and trying to stay out of the fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a pretty complicated fight to, to learn all the way through, but uh, when everyone does their part right, uh, you can take her down. Which is kind of what we did there. Which is <laughs> totally what we did there. Yeah. In one take, too. And did not take five takes. First try. <laughs> yeah. Take that, Rosa was well from us. I still don't know how you pronounce that name. <laughs> All right, and here we are with a, a different boss encounter. Uh, this is actually starts off, it uh, kind of fools you. It starts off with uh, two of these Daedra here that we're going to fight. One is lightning and one is fire. One of the reasons we went for uh, the... Um, Flame Twin first was Rich is actually a vampire, so we're a little bit afraid of all the fire damage we're going to be taking, and since he's our main healer, oh, we want to make went. sure that he doesn't uh, suddenly get bursted down. Yeah, why did you pick a vampire, Rich? <laughs> that is just my style. No tactical advantage, I just like the red eyes. I do. As Maria said, fire hurts. Skeletal. Yeah, he comes out, there. Yeah. he does the big stomp attack right off the get-go, so everyone has to just not rush in right away and get hit by the big stomp attack with it there. Oh god. Uh, but Yay, Paul. Paul and I are super excited about fighting this boss. <laughs> uh, so yeah, he summons these adds that you generally want to kite because they'll explode when they die. Um, meanwhile, you got to keep DPS on the boss uh, off in the background, and then he'll initiate these waves of fire or lightning, depending uh, on the phase. And it kind of becomes every man for himself, right? You can see we're kind of working together here. Rich is doing a pretty good job of throwing out heals for, a, but a lot of times the group will get separated, and you just kind of have to do your best to avoid taking damage and keeping yourself alive for the for the duration because it's just, it's so quick. These fires start dropping down, so you yeah. can see one here. Like I'm way in the back, and oh well, I'm separated. I guess I'll just hang back here and hope I don't die. Yeah. So when Paul goes down here, right, and we can see the nifty death recap showing how he died, the key thing is, um, it's not it's not over, right? Maria can come in and run into battle resum. And while that's happening, uh, I can, we'll, we'll cut to that, I can, I can stand back and tank him for a second with some, some roll dodging. I'll bow tank him. Uh, you can see there. I don't want to get hit with any of these because I'll just die. Yeah, so even though rolls are important, uh, picking up uh, the slack for others in your party who might not be as good is pretty common. Uh, yeah, so as he gets lower and lower, you can start seeing the cadence of these, uh, <laughs> these explosions and lightning bolts starts going up. And it basically gets to the point where uh, you can't, you can't hold it. You can't hold it together. It's going to fall apart, and it's just a race. It's a race for survival. It's a race to the finish. And everyone's spamming their abilities and their heals and just trying to stay alive as well as they can. 
and you got to be dodging and keeping yourself alive and heal- healing everyone you can and doing as much damage to that guy as you possibly can. And I, f- I find the best way to finish this off is flat on your back, which is... <laughs> <laughs> you definitely had your share of those. Yeah. Yeah, so first try, we killed that guy, which is good because, you know, there was no editing there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we are. We're uh, getting to the uh, final boss battle in uh, Crypt of Hearts here. And uh, so this sword is something you run in, you activate, and you summon the boss. And uh, you can kind of see a little bit about what's going on here. Just go touch it. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. <laughs> the glowing sword in the middle of yeah, the room. Yeah, just go touch yeah. it. But we're, we're going to save that for uh, you to experience when you go through the veteran uh, version of Crypt of Hearts. Yeah, this guy is no joke. You definitely want to be fully buffed when you take him on. Is he going to use that sword later? Uh, there's a 100% chance he will use that sword later. Might be time for more circle of protection. Yeah. Love that spell. 